Hello everyone, it's me Sanjay Vasu back again for another video. This time I'll be doing it on Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 2 which is a non-calculated paper for extended students for examination from 2025 specimen paper. I'll be doing part 3 of my work through on this paper where I'll be covering questions 21 through 26. Let's start. Question 21. In this question all measurements are in centimeters. The height of the triangle given here is h, and the height of the rectangle is h plus 2. The length of the base of the triangle is x, length of the rectangle is x plus 1. The area of the triangle is 11 cm squared, and the area of the rectangle is 39 cm squared. A. Write down an expression in terms of x for the height of the rectangle. Well, we know that the area of the rectangle is 39 centimeters squared, and that is the height times the width. So we want to know what the height of the rectangle is in terms of x. We know what it is in terms of h, but not in x. We know the area of the rectangle is 39 centimeters squared. And in terms of x, we know the length of the rectangle. So we can find the height in terms of x, which means that the expression in terms of x is 39 by x plus 1 for the height. Why? That's because when you multiply the length and the height together, you have to get the area, which is 39. So you multiply this by something here, you have to get 39. So you multiply these two, you will indeed get 39. Therefore, this is our answer. Part B. Show that 2x squared minus 15x plus 22 is equal to 0. For this, we need to create a pair of simultaneous equations, each using each shape which is given. So we have the area of the triangle is 11 centimeters squared, so half times x times h, because half times the base times the height, that's the area, which is 11 centimeters squared. And then we have the area of the rectangle. x plus 1 times h plus 2 is equal to 39 because the area of the rectangle is multiplying the two side lengths for the length and height. Now we need to find this in terms of x here. So we need to substitute some values of x into h so we can remove the h over here. So let's make h the subject. That means h is equal to 22 by x. Now, substituting this into this equation here, so x plus 1 times 22 by x plus 2 is equal to 39. Now, we can simplify this to get 22 plus 2x plus 22 by x plus 2 is going to be equal to 39. Now I can bring 39 to the other side, so 2x minus 15 plus 22 by x is equal to 0. And we can simply multiply by x on both sides. Multiplying by x here does not really change anything, 0 times x is still 0. But then multiplying here, we multiply x by each of the terms. So 2x squared minus 15x plus 22 is equal to 0. And this is what we want, this is what we needed to prove, this is what we needed to show, and that's what we've proven. So that's our answer. Part C. By factorizing and solving 2x squared minus 15x plus 22 is equal to 0, find the two possible heights of the triangle. You can see that these two, 2 times 22 becomes 44. And we need any two numbers to multiply the 44 and add up to negative 15. This is what we want. That's the only way we can factorize them. And these two numbers are negative 4 and negative 11. So now we know the two numbers. So now we can split the middle term into these two numbers as the coefficients of x. So 2x squared minus 4x minus 11x minus, sorry, plus 22 is equal to 0. Now we can factorize this. 2x times x minus 2 minus 11 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now 2x minus 11 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. We have factorized it. Now solving it, just equate each of the brackets equal to 0. So there's two possible values of x. 
So the x value can be either 11 by 2, 5.5, or 2. Now if x is equal to 5.5 or 2, how do you find the value of h? We know that the area of the triangle is 11, which is half times x times h. So you can substitute both the x values. Half times 5.5 times h is equal to 11, so h is 4. Or half times 2 times h is equal to 11, and that means h is equal to 11. So h is either 4 or 11, and that's our answer. Let's go to question 22. Find the exact value of x. First of all, remember that this is a non-calculated paper, so you're not allowed to just use calculator for this question, and therefore you must know your trigonometric identities. So well, we have the adjacent to this angle, and we have the hypotenuse, which is x. So we can use the cosine formula. Cosine of theta equals adjacent by hypotenuse. That means cosine of 30 is equal to the adjacent, which is 8, by the hypotenuse x. Now, how do we know what cosine 30 is without a calculator? As I said, remember your trig identities, remember your trig values for specific values of theta. So for values of 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, you need to remember all the sine, cosine, and tangent values. In this case, cosine 30 is going to be equal to root 3 over 2. And we can just write root 3 over 2 is equal to 8 over x. And we can make x the subject. x is equal to 16 by root 3. And since they've asked for the exact value, you can leave it like this, or you can rationalize the denominator, since that's usually the best thing to do. Multiply both numerator and denominator by root 3. So you get 16 root 3 by 3. That is our answer. Question 23. Why is a single fraction in simplest form? 3 by x minus 4 minus 4 by x plus 3. So the way to write this as a single fraction is simply the cross multiply. So we just multiply 3 times x plus 3. This 2. That's why we cross the first one. And then we put the sign in the middle, which is a minus, and multiply these two. 4 times x minus 4. And then divide all this by the product of the denominators. x minus 4 times x plus 3. That's simply going to be equal to 3x plus 9 minus 4x plus 16. Since two negatives make a positive. When you multiply, it, it's 16. And dividing this by the denominators over here. That's going to be 25 minus x by x minus 4 times x plus 3. And this will be our final answer. 25 minus x by x minus 4 times x plus 3. This is in a single fraction, of course, therefore it's our answer. Let's go to question 24. A. Write x squared minus 4x plus 7 in the form of x minus a the whole squared plus b. Well, how do you find a? In this quadratic equation, let's just write it as capital A x squared plus capital B x plus capital C. Not to be confused with these A and B, these are completely different, which is I have written them in capital when these are small letters. So this small a over here, negative a, is going to be equal to b by 2. And this b is capital B. So over here, this b is negative 4. So negative a is equal to negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2, and a is equal to positive 2, because there's already a negative symbol here, so it's actually x minus 2 the whole squared plus b. Now how do we find what that b is? We can just write x squared minus 4x plus 7, which has to be equal to x minus 2 the whole squared plus b. This is what we want to write. We want to write this in the form of this. We're not changing anything, but the way we write it, all the values remain the same. So x minus 2 the whole square is just x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus b. And therefore, we can cancel the x squared. We can cancel the minus 4x from both sides. 
So 7 equals 4 plus B and B is equal to 3. So now we know what A and B are. So X minus 2 the whole squared plus 3 is our final answer. Let's go to part B. Write down the coordinates of the turning point of the graph of Y equals X squared minus 4X plus 7. There is a simple rule when you find the completing the square method. When you have the quadratic and completed the square, then you'll be able to find the turning point really easily. So if the quadratic is in the form of x minus h the whole squared plus k, that means the turning point is going to be h comma k. So in this case, x minus 2 the whole squared plus 3. This is in the form of x minus h the whole squared plus k. Remember this is minus h, so minus 2 is equal to minus h, and h is equal to 2. And of course, k is 3, so the turning point is 2 comma 3. Whatever you have over here with the x in the bracket, this value you negate it and then put as the x value of the turning point. And now that'll be our answer. Question 25. The two shapes are mathematically similar. The area of the larger shape is 36 centimeters squared and the area of the smaller shape is 25 centimeters squared. The height of the larger shape is 9 centimeters and the height of the smaller is x centimeters. Find the value of x. Well, the area of the shape is 36 and the area of this one is 25. So the ratio of areas is 36 is to 25. Of course, both in centimeters squared. Now the ratio of sides is going to be the square root of both the values. That's 6 is to 5. Of course, we only take the positive square roots for a ratio. We do not take negative 6 and negative 5. For ratios, these don't count at all. So, using the ratio of sides here, 6 is to 5, and that's equal to 9 is to x, since we have 9 as the larger side length, x as the smaller side length. Okay, not side length, but then the height. So, either way, there's still one dimensional. It's still a line segment. It's not an area. Therefore, it still can be counted using a ratio of sides. It still can be found that the x value divided by 9 is equal to 5 over 6. Since this is what the ratio says, we just convert it into fractions. So x is equal to 5 over 6 times 9, which is in simplest form 15 by 2. Or you can write it as 7.5 if you wish. That's our answer. Let's go to question 26 f of x equals x times x plus 2 times x minus 3. A on the diagram sketch the graph of y equals f of x for it minus 3 less than equal to x less than equal to 4. So the values of intersections with the axes. They have asked us to sketch the graph. Therefore, we do not need to plot a table for minus 3, minus 2 all the way up to values of 4 for x and then find the y values and then plot it. It does not have to be completely accurate. But the main thing you need to find is the intersections with the axes. The y-intercept is the easiest to find. Since to find the y-intercept, let's just say y is equal to f of x, so y is equal to all this. To find the y-intercept, we just substitute x equals 0. So 0 times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 3, and that is going to be 0. So the y-intercept is 0. Notice that this y-intercept is also an x-intercept because it is the intersection of both y and x axes. It touches both the y axis and x axis at the same time. So when you're finding the x intercepts, this must be one of the x intercepts as well. And this is true. When you find the x intercepts, y is equal to 0. So when y is equal to 0, we just make each of these equal to 0 and find out what the x value is for those. Well, that means using the first x here, x is equal to 0, which is what we have. The second one here, x plus 2 is equal to 0, so x is negative 2. It'll be around there. And the third one, which is x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x is equal to 3, around here. So minus 2, 3, and we have a 0, comma 0 here. Now, how do we draw the graph? Well, we can see that all the x values are positive here. So when you multiply them, you'll get x cubed as a positive value. It's now going to be negative coefficient. It has a positive coefficient, in this case, 1. Therefore, the graph would have this kind of shape. If 
it was a negative coefficient, that means the graph would have this shape. But then, in this case, positive, so we just draw a graph like this. Remember, this is only a sketch, so you do not have to be entirely accurate. But remember, you have to label all these points as well. Show the values of the intersections with the axes, this is very important. And that's our answer. Part B, expand and simplify x times x plus 2 times x minus 3. We can expand x times x plus 2 into x squared plus 2x. And now we have an x minus 3 part left. So now we just use the FOIL method front, and then outside, and then inside, and then last FOIL method to multiply the brackets. So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times minus 3 is negative 3x squared. Now 2x times x is plus 2x squared, and 2x times negative 3 is just negative 6x. So this becomes x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. That's our answer. Part C. A is the point 1 comma negative 6. The tangent to the graph of y equals f of x at A meets the y-axis at B. Find the coordinates of B. To find this tangent line, we need to know the gradient of the tangent line. And to find this gradient, we need the derivative of the function f of x. So dy by dx, or df by dx, if you want to write it, you can write it as dy or df. So I'm writing df by dx, that's the derivative of this, which we just expanded. So 3x squared minus 2x minus 6. Now, if you want to find the gradient at the point A to find the tangent line, we need to just substitute the x value. So df by dx at x is equal to 1 because that's where the tangent line is going to be. So that's going to be equal to 3 minus 2 minus 6, which is negative 5. So that is the gradient. Now, how do you find the y-intercept of the tangent line? That is what you want, right? So we have the point A, which is on the tangent line. And we have the gradient, which is minus 5. So we can just write this is M, or the gradient of the tangent, to A. Now, to find the value of B, so you can write Y equals MX plus C. And that means we can find the Y-intercept, or C in other words, by substituting X equals 1, M is equal to minus 5, and y is equal to minus 6. So that means c is equal to minus 1. And that's going to be the y-coordinate of b. What is the x-coordinate of b? Well, since it is on the y-axis, it meets the y-axis of b, so it's on the y-axis. That means the x-coordinate is equal to 0. And therefore, the coordinates of B, 0, comma, minus 1. That's our answer. And this was our last answer for the paper since I've come to the end of it. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.